All right, everybody, welcome back uh, for another deep dive today. We're really uh, tackling a giant, Mr. Beast, and looking specifically at his Think Media interview. Yeah, this is a good one. This is really uh, a treasure trove of information for right. anyone who's interested in YouTube, whether you're just starting out or if you've been at it for a while. Um, one of the first things that, uh, that really struck me was this idea, and he says this pretty early on in the interview, that you really have to forget subscriber counts and views. Yeah, he kind of throws a wrench in the works right away. You know, you think about YouTube and you think about those numbers. Right, right. And especially for somebody who is starting out, mm. you know, that, that they can be so daunting to think like, oh my gosh, I'm never going to get those numbers. Um, but, but I think what's interesting about the way he phrases it is he's not saying those things aren't important. He's just saying, don't focus on those as your primary goal. Yeah, he really emphasizes the quality of the content. Yes. Make a good video and the numbers will follow. Yes, and he's really talking about playing the long game here. You know? <sighs> yeah. He even says that, and this is a really bold statement. He's like, with the knowledge I have now, if I started fresh, I could hit 10 million subscribers in six months. I mean, the guy knows what he's doing. Right. But then he follows it up by saying, but I don't think I could do that without having made the first however many videos it took to get to where he is now, right? Exactly, and it kind of gets to this 100 video challenge that he talks about. Have mm -hmm. you heard about this? Yeah, so this is really fascinating. He talks about making 100 videos where every single video is better than the last. And he doesn't mean like a little bit better. He means significantly better. It's all about that iterative process, learning from your mistakes, trying new things, constantly refining. And I think it really speaks to this idea that, you know, you're not going to start out making the best content that you will ever make. Absolutely. And he even argues that a lot of small YouTubers, it's not that their videos are bad. Mm -hmm. They're just not good enough. They're just not there yet. Yeah. To stand out in a sea of content, you need to be exceptional. And one of the most important elements he talks about, and this is something I think a lot of people overlook, especially as viewers, those first 10 seconds are crucial. Yeah, it's like he's saying, hey, you got to grab him by the throat in those first few seconds. Right. And it makes perfect sense. I, I mean, think about how you consume content these days. You're scrolling, something catches your eye, you click on it, and you're really only giving it a few seconds to decide if you're going to stick around or not. I know, I do that all the time. And he's seen it, you know? Mm -hmm. He looks at the analytics and he knows that a weak intro can absolutely tank a video, even if the rest of it is pure gold. Yeah. He even uses this really interesting analogy of picturing that audience retention graph like plummeting. It's like a roller coaster that just goes straight down. Exactly. And he's designing his intros specifically to combat that. Yeah. He actually breaks down one of his own intros in the interview. And it's so fascinating to hear him talk about the intention behind every single element. Like he's really thinking about how to hook the viewer from the very first frame. And speaking of grabbing attention, he also has some really interesting things to say about thumbnails, especially in today's age of autoplay. Oh yeah, he brings up a great point there. It's like, with autoplay, you might only have a split second to capture someone's attention as they're scrolling through their feed. It's not just about having a pretty picture anymore. It's gotta have that click me factor. Exactly. And he uses a really great example of this insane 1,000 person skateboard stunt, you know? He's like, you see that thumbnail, you're gonna wanna click on that. You can't not look. He's thinking about visual storytelling, evoking curiosity. It's about conveying the essence of your video instantly. So we've talked about these like really practical tips, right? Like hooking viewers early on and creating eye-catching thumbnails. But what about the content itself? Yeah, and this is where I think Mr. Beast, you know, kind of gets into his philosophy a little bit. Yeah. He says point blank, no one is ever going to do what I do better than me. And you know what? He might be right. He's kind of built this empire. He has. Like, it's not just YouTube videos at this point. It's like yeah. challenges and philanthropy and just this whole world he's created. Right. And I think that's a really important distinction, you know, because so many people, they see the success and they think, oh, I got to recreate that. But he's saying, no, find your own thing. Create your own lane. Exactly. Like, it doesn't always have to be these big, crazy, expensive videos either. Yeah, he talks about how some of his most popular videos were made for, like, no money. Yeah. Like that one where he spent, I think it was 24 hours in the desert. Yeah, with just the tent. And, like, barely any supplies, and it blew up. So it's not about the money. No. It's about the idea. <laughs> it's about the execution. And, like, it's about connecting with your audience on a deeper level. And I think that's something that he does incredibly well is he creates this experience where 
you don't just want to watch one video. Right. You want to binge the entire channel. It's like binging a show on Netflix or something. Exactly. Like you finish one and you're like, okay, what's next? What else you got? And it all comes back to that idea of the hook, right? Like you've got to deliver on that promise and then over deliver if you can. And he's constantly like pushing himself too, you know, like he's all about seeking out feedback, surrounding himself with people who are going to challenge him. Who are going to make him better. Exactly. He's got that growth mindset. And I think that's so important for anyone in the YouTube space or really any creative field is that willingness to always learn and evolve. It's funny. He makes it sound almost formulaic, you know, mm. like if you follow these steps, you too could be Mr. Beast. Yeah. But obviously there's more to it than that. Oh, absolutely. He even touches on that. You know, like he's very open about the fact that this level of success takes like an insane amount of work. Yeah, he talks about the pressure, the long hours. He's like, I have a mental breakdown every other week. Which, you know, obviously not something to glorify, but it speaks to the intensity of what he's doing. Yeah, it's like a cautionary tale, right? Like okay. find that balance. Success is great, but not if it's killing you. Yeah, and he talks about having a life outside of YouTube, pursuing yeah. other passions, which you know, it's easy to get caught up in the hustle, but it's so important to have that separation, to have somebody to come back to. It makes you wonder though, right? Like what keeps him going after all this? He's achieved so much, what's next? That's the thing with Mr. Beast though, right? He's always pushing the boundaries. Like he's not content with just like resting on his laurels. Yeah. What's the next challenge? How can I outdo myself? He seems to thrive on that pressure, that need to mm -hmm. constantly evolve. And you know, it's something to admire, even if you're not trying to build a YouTube empire like his. For sure, and it's inspiring, you know? Like he shows what's possible with hard work, dedication, and a deep understanding of your audience. Absolutely, so as you're thinking about your own YouTube journey, or really any creative pursuit, take a page from Mr. Beast's playbook. Find what makes you unique, create content that matters, and never stop pushing yourself to be better. And who knows, maybe one day we'll be doing a deep dive on your channel. That's it for this deep dive. Catch you all next time.